This time on Documentify TV. On a ridge in Montana, there's a stone wall that looks like it was built on purpose. Straight joints, stacked blocks, even little nubs that people compare to Peru and Egypt. Some say this is proof of a lost ancient civilization. Others say it's one of the best optical tricks geology can pull. Today on Documentify TV, we're going to treat this like a forensic case. Supporters call these the Montana megaliths, Sage Wall, the Tizer Dolmen, and other formations in the Boulder Batholith. They point to a wall nearly 25 feet high and about 275 feet long. Blocks they say weigh up to 90 tons and polygonal joints that fit together like a cyclopean masonry. Some even argue this is part of a pre-Ice Age global building tradition. Before we decide whether that holds up, we need to ask a basic question. Who actually lived here and what can the rocks do on their own? The Elkhorn Mountains and the Helena National Forest have never been empty. This is the homeland and the hunting ground of Salish, Kootenai, Blackfeet and the Shoshone peoples. Archaeological sites like Indian Creek and Makhafi show people here for more than 11,000 years. We find stone tools, teepee rings, fasting beds, drive lanes, sophisticated use of stone but light on the land. Nothing in that record points to a city of carved 90-ton granite blocks. If a construction project on that scale existed, we'd expect quarries, tool marks, and huge piles of waste rock. We don't see any of that around Sage Wall. Instead, the megaliths are the mountain itself. Sage Wall is carved out of the boulder batholith, a huge body of magma that cooled underground about 70 to 80 million years ago. As that molten rock cooled and contracted, it cracked. The most efficient way for a big uniform mass to relieve stress is to fracture in three directions, up, down, side to side, and front to back. That creates a three-dimensional grid of joints, naturally dividing the rock into blocks a meter or two across. Later, as overlying rock eroded away and pressure came off, the granite peeled in sheets parallel to the surface, stacking those blocks into courses that look a lot like masonry rows. What looks like careful stone fitting is really a cooling pattern written into the rock tens of millions of years ago. The Tizer Dolmen, that capstone sitting on two uprights, matches a landform geologists call a tor. Deep underground water and chemistry rotted some parts of the granite into soft sand but left harder core stones intact. Later, erosion stripped the loose material away and left the solid blocks standing, sometimes stacked in ways that look intentional. Those nubs people highlight, they line up neatly with blobs of tougher rock or inclusions inside the granite, which weather more slowly than the surrounding surface. To a geologist, that's differential weathering not a lifting boss for our unknown civilization. If this wall had been carved and stacked, we'd expect evidence. Microscopic tool marks, quarries where blocks were cut out, debris from shaping, cultural material in the soil, broken tools, pottery, charcoal. Instead, we see weathered granite, natural grooves at the base, and in some places, lichen growing right across the joints between blocks. That last detail matters. For lichen to bridge a crack, those rock faces have to stay perfectly stable relative to each other for a very long time. That's what we would expect from a single solid mass, not from stacked masonry settling under its own weight. So, what are we left with? Not a stone city that rewrites human history, but a landscape where deep time geology fools the human eye. A magma chamber that froze underground. 
was stretched by tectonics, sculpted by ice and weather, and then rediscovered by people who understandably see patterns in the rock. For me, that doesn't make Sage Wall less interesting. It shifts the question from who built this to how did the planet assemble something that looks so engineered with no blueprint at all? Let me know in the comments. Now that you've seen the evidence, how does Sage Wall read to you? Construction or geology pretending to be one? And if you like investigations where nature and human history blur, check out the video on the screen now. The story of the 60 ancient lodges built at 11,000 feet in Wyoming, another place where engineering and landscape seem to merge in unexpected ways. That's it for today's video, folks. See you next time right here on Documentify TV.